This is 30% hydrogen peroxide. We used this in the other experiment, if you recall, when you were doing your inorganic synthesis. And this is about 10 times more concentrated than the stuff you have at home. And the stuff you have at home is kept in a brown bottle in a dark place because light will cause the hydrogen peroxide to break down into water and oxygen. And so that is actually a very exothermic process. It gives off a lot of heat. You would never know it because it happens so slowly. What I'm going to do, however, is add it to this uh, graduated cylinder. And I'm going to add a catalyst for its decomposition. And you'll see it get very hot and something else really good too. I'm also going to add some detergent. This is regular um, household detergent in here, just so that when the um, oxygen's given off, it'll be trapped inside the bubbles. So you actually be able to see the top stuff. I'm going to add some color to make it more interesting. is going to do a rapid decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. The oxygen should be trapped in the detergent, and then I just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. <Whoa>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see the steam coming off. It's a very exothermic reaction. <laughs> this is hexane diamine and sodium hydroxide. I'm going to lay it on the bottom here. And on top of this, I'm going to put a solution of stable coil chloride and hexane. And the interface between the two, because there are different densities, one's going to float on top of the other. Let's see if it's a nice toxic thing. Good luck, Yeah. Answer's always better when you get it in the lab. Anyway, <laughs> so <coughs> at the interface, I don't know if any of you can squatch down and see. You might see a little bit of white gunk forming. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is take my handy dandy tweezers. I'm going to go to the interface and grab, and I should be able to make yards and yards and yards and yards of nylon, which is a common fiber use in clothes and jackets and all kinds of stuff. We go slow. But industry, when they do this, they have little things called spinnerets, and they extrude the solution But if I kept going with this, I could make literally yards and yards and yards. And if I stir it up, I make one big blob of nylon. <laughs> so liquid nitrogen is extremely cold. It's a good cryogenic material. And it's at 77 Kelvin, which is just 77 degrees above absolute zero. So I can take normal things that typically have nice ductile elastomeric properties. I put it in the cold stuff, and it makes it more crystalline. For example, I can take Saigon tubing. It's a little stretchy, very bendy. Not as stretchy as rubber. But I can fold it up, immerse it in liquid nitrogen. And before long, it's solid, which is cool. It does get pretty. It might. <laughs> so, it's very solid. First I do it with this, there's no danger of it shattering into sharp shards that go into your eye. Moving on. I can do the same thing with rubber. This is just a rubber tubing. It's even more stretchy. This one shouldn't shatter. Like glass. This actually never happened in court, but anyway. Let me try and shatter it on the tube. Yeah. It's a uh, It broke, kind of. But yeah, really cold. It'll give you frostbite if you hold it too long. But yeah. No longer elastic. And if I let this sit and cool down, it'll eventually go back to its original elastic properties. Anyway, so this is a balloon filled with my breath. Um, and so it's CO2, nitrogen, oxygen, all that jazz. I'm going to take it and put it in liquid nitrogen. So you've learned about gas laws. So what's going to happen when I put this in cold? Okay. Okay. Let's 
good and cold now. They just felt like water went all over them and they were wet. And as it's expanding, <laughs> Sometimes, it's, so I don't know if you can see, there's little stuff inside. That's my CO2 for my breath that's solidified from the, from the air. And if you do this several times, eventually you could see liquid oxygen forming, figuring out how much oxygen is present in my breath. Last time I did this, the Rekka ball exploded everywhere. But you all have, that's why you have the goggles on. So like I showed you before I put it in, it's a really bouncy object. But then, you know, when you put it in liquid nitrogen, it becomes very, very not elastic. <laughs> okay. So the banana under the coal has already broken a little bit, but we'll see, still be able to see a pretty good demonstration of <laughs> sorry. Next slide, we'll have so much. <laughs> so, a little bit of <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, that's liquid nitrogen. And um, like I said, it's, it's pretty cold, but it's not like that dangerous. So I can. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> It's a very similar reaction to what uh, lightning bugs do, and also very similar to the cool stuff that happens in a glow stick. Same sort of chemistry. What's happening is there um, bonds breaking bonds forming in this reaction, and during the process, a photon, uh, um, some light energy is given off from a photon. It's um, called luminol A and luminol B. Um, I don't remember the exact components. I know this has peroxide in it, and this has uh, copper sulfate in it. Um, and there's other organic molecules in there that do the reaction. But if you're interested, just Wikipedia. It'll come up. Okay, so yeah, that's luminol. So, in the bottom of this test tube, I have potassium chlorate. What's going to happen now? is that the solid potassium chlorate, which is an ionic solid, so it's, uh, melting point should be what? Really, 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 really high. So, so what's going to happen now, it's going to start to melt. And then once it melts, you'll start to see a lot of uh, bubbles be given off. And those bubbles are oxygen, so it's going to decompose. Okay? And then, so what's going to happen now, so I'm going to have really hot oxygen with catalysts, and then I'm going to throw in a burnable source, okay? And let's see what I want to burn. So should do a sour patch kit? Sour patch yeah, 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 okay. So this poor little sour patch kit is full of yummy sugar, and your body uses enzymes to sequentially, in a controlled fashion, release the chemical energy so that you can live. However, this reaction doesn't care about that. It's going to release it all at one time, a lot of energy, and then you'll be able to see the potassium ion undergo atomic emission at the same time. So do you remember the atomic emission lab? It's all the pretty colors. It was hard to see the potassium one. It was a pretty lilac color. You'll be able to see it very well. Now you can go <laughs> In smaller test tubes, they scream, so it's a little bit more horrific, but nonetheless, it's cool. So, yay. Thanks for being in my lab.